Today, I'm gonna to show you how to get started color marking with your laser on stainless steel. And quick note, you can do this with a fiber laser, you can do this with a diode laser, but there's a caveat I'll talk about in a little bit. Unfortunately, sorry CO2 folks, we can't do this. In light burn, we're gonna do a simple materials test. We're gonna to go to laser tools, material test. Regardless of the laser type you're using, your first setting is going to be power. Now, depending on if you're using a fiber or a diode laser will depend on what your second setting is. So for me, I'm using the fiber for this video. My parameter is going to be Q pulse. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the material test for a fiber laser to do the color marking. If you wanna use a diode laser for this, you're gonna do a material test, but all you're gonna do is set speeds and powers just like you would with any other material test. The catch is on a diode laser, it's very inconsistent. When I've done my testing and I know talking to others and reading online, so many people say that doing this with a diode laser, it's really hard to consistently get the same color even on the same material. So just be aware that that might be an issue for you. Now, if you would like me to make a video all about doing color engraving on stainless steel on a diode laser, just leave me a comment. I'm gonna do a count of five on the left here for my power and I'm going to go from 20% to 40%. I'm going to leave everything else the same. For Q pulse, I am going to go from, I've found that starting at 10 is the best, and I'm going to go up to 45. That's it. Those are my settings for the rows and the columns. Next up, I'm going to go to material settings. Edit material setting. I'm not going to mess with anything up here except for frequency. I'm going to set the frequency to 200 kilohertz. Everything else is going to be taken care of by the material test. Next thing, I'm going to change my line interval, and I'm going to change it way, way down to 0 0.001. I have tried 0 0.002. That will work, and you'll get some colors, but what I've noticed is with the 0 0.002 line interval, you have to, like, the colors have to be dead on, like, looking straight on. If you tilt it even a little bit, you start to lose the color, whereas the 0 0.001, you have a, we'll call it a wider field of view to see the coloring on the stainless steel. I'm gonna leave my scan angle as is, one pass, and we're just gonna leave everything like it is. Hit okay. Text settings, I'm gonna do a thousand millimeters. I'm gonna set this to 75. 30% power should be good. And pulse width, I'm gonna leave it 200.1. Scan angle's the same, number of passes. We're gonna leave it like it is. For border setting, you wanna make sure the output is turned off because what this does is this is designed to cut out your material test when it's done you're not cutting out a stainless steel piece with a fiber laser unless you've got a giant industrial fiber laser and that's it it's set and ready to go now what i will recommend is click the little icon and save it it's really long but it's descriptive so i'll remember what it is and that's all set so now we can frame it and run it i'm not going to bore you with the engraving because i've already done this multiple times but don't worry i got your fiber laser engraving fix when i do my final tip piece for this video i will do a time lapse now the type of stainless steel you use will have an impact on how your images turn out. For example, I'm using these stainless steel business cards which have a nice mirrored finish and I find these give me the best results. When I try and use something like this tumbler that has a satin finish, I get completely different results and I have to do test patterns on this as well. Just because you get certain colors on one material doesn't mean they're gonna be exactly the same across all different stainless steels. Once you have your color test done, now all you have to do is pick the color you like see what Q-Pulse and power it is that gives you that color, and then put that information into the layer in light burn that you want to be that color. And now I'm gonna put my color test to use. So I brought my purchase file into light burn, and then I've just gone through and I've changed different shapes to different layers. Disclaimer about this design. I did not make it myself. I bought it on Etsy. I'll leave a link in the description for it. And I'm sure someone is leaving me a comment. Why don't you use sub layers? Because people are always asking me, why don't I use sub layers? In this case, I didn't use sub layers because I wanted to see some different colors. Just helps me visualize a little bit more about how this might look when it's done. So that's why I have like a billion T layers here with different colors. I also have a tool layer around the outside of this. And that's just for framing purposes. But each layer, all I've done is I've gone in, they're all set to 1,000 millimeters per second and 200 frequency, same line intervals, everything is the same as when I did the color test, but I've changed the power and the Q-pulse width for each layer to get the color that I want. Today I'm using my Monport GI 30 watt MOPA fiber laser to do this. 
and I will leave a link in the description if you want to get more info about that laser. I will also leave a link in the description for the stainless steel business cards that I am using for this video as well. Watching my fiber laser color engrave is just mind blowing to me. It's almost like magic, just watching the light scan over the metal and it just turning colors. It blows my mind every time I do it. However, that is not the only thing you can do with a fiber laser. In fact, if you wanna see something else you can do, check out my video up here on 3D engraving brass coins. Thanks for watching.